Hey everybody, Oko here, and welcome back to our playthrough of Final Fantasy XI. So we're starting off our adventures here in Whitegate once again. There's a few people we want to talk to before we start investigating the assault missions that, uh... Oh, let me just look at my notes here. I've forgotten her name already. The, the young Mithra. Uh, her name was... Naja Salahim. Yes. I want to talk to, uh, there's a few guys we want to talk to around town first. One of them is this guy here, Mafwab. He was sort of someone we sort of talked to earlier, I think. The Seagull Fratry's headquarters are said to be located somewhere on Arapago Reef, but we have yet to pinpoint their exact location. So that's sort of a little tip of somewhere we want to go very soon. So I just wanted to talk to him so we got that information. The Arapago Reef, we are going to be going. Now I'm going to head over to the tea house to collect a little more gossip. So we're going to go south. Here we are back at the tea house. So I did want to talk again with um, Ulamal. Now that we've finished that supply, uh, that one quest with the uh, Tarutaru for the uh, groceries, now we can talk to this guy and get more information. I remember you, adventurer. Would you happen to have seen our boss lately? To tell the truth, he's been missing since he left to pick up his shipment at the port. I wonder if he hasn't decided to sail off to some other land. No, he gets seasick too easily for that. I guess that's ruled out then. But you know, Ulama. What? Have you got any clues? Actually, there's something that's been bothering me. It can't be. Could you be wondering about food that's disappeared right before your eyes? What? It's happened to you too? I knew it. It must be the boss's doing. You think so too? But what if he's in some kind of trouble? The boss himself is trouble. That guy is a handful. Well, we do have an adventurer right here. Do you think you could help us find the boss? Oh yes, please help us. When you take us out of the kitchen, we're like fish out of water. And Al-Zabi is so big. It gives me goosebumps just thinking about looking for one person among the throngs of people out there. Alright, fine. You, sir, are a kind soul. Well then, I guess that wraps up it up. Good luck with the search. Alright, we'll look for him. <laughs> we'll look for the boss. And the third and last guy I want to talk to in town is very close to here as well. And maybe I should do a search for him. Let me just look down here. I think we're going to have to go through a door to get to him. Hmm... Okay, hold on. Let's look for him. So this last guy's name is... Wowed. There he is. Wowed. Yeah, we are close to him. to go down. He must be hanging out down here. Oh, we think we might have... Is that him? No. No. We want to go this way. Oh, he's inside here. Oh, no. Not there. Can't get in there. Hmm, maybe he was up there. Oh, there he is. Wowed. Ah, a visitor from foreign shores. Greetings. I am Wowed, a humble seer of Al-Zabi. I divine from your appearance that you hail from the western continent, a place we here know as the Middle Lands. An adventurer, yes? 
The Empire of Atagan recruits mercenaries on a grand scale, as she does all things. Our meager city has become a scurrying anthill of activity. But you do not come to hear simple gossip. Destiny brought you to me, and it is of destiny I shall speak. I require less coin from adventurers for our divinations, considering their uncertain employment. Gaze away. Most excellent. I shall now proceed to ask you several questions. My divinations follow a somewhat unorthodox process. Answer truthfully, and all shall be revealed. What is destiny? All right, so I have the answers here. We want to make sure we get all these right. Um, but some of them might be more obvious than others, like they, the, the, right, the correct answer. So, one forges for oneself. Does the accomplishment of a goal require sacrifice and hardships? Absolutely. You hold in your hands a forbidden scroll. Reading it will bring you untold wisdom, but cost all that you own. Burn the scroll. If the loss of one life would save 10,000, would you offer yourself without hesitation? Without hesitation. Would you choose a tumultuous life where fame or fortune were attainable? or a tranquil life where both were forever beyond your reach. I would choose a chaotic life. You stand on the precipice between life and death. Would you choose to live life as a beast if it would save you from falling into the shadowy abyss of the underworld? I would embrace life as a beast. A companion in battle turns against you, raising a weapon to attack. Ah, I have no choice but to cut him down. A loved one is afflicted with a terrible illness and has little time left to live. You are asked to end that life by your own hands. Let's grant the request and put them out of their misery. You are in the midst of a fierce battle. The enemy lying at your feet was once a friend. His breath is ragged and weak. End his pain. A superior to whom you owe a great debt orders you to act in a way that violates your sense of justice. Well, we have to follow our own sense of just justice. Thank you for your patience. The answers you have provided will be most helpful in my divination. Let us look up what has been revealed. Sky, flame, gale, stone, and spring. I see all five serpent symbols. This sign heralds a turning point in your destiny. A time will come when you must choose one of two paths. The road you walk will be entirely up to you. Even I cannot ascertain what awaits you at the end of each path, yet one must be chosen nonetheless. This choice cannot be avoided. My divination is at an end. Have I unsettled you? Ahahaha! A seer I may be, but I suggest you take these divinations with a light heart, no matter what the signs suggest. Should a sign prove to be the gentle push that was needed, then consider it a blessing. Now comes the matter of payment. I am told that an object of incredible rarity can be found in the Middle Lands. Would you consider bringing me this prize in place of common coin? To be truthful, 
The one who wishes to gaze upon this object is my own bedridden mother. A final wish from a curious old lady. Do not concern yourself with haste. My dear mother clings to life with surprising ferocity. The object of which I speak is precious in the Near East, but worth precious little elsewhere. The treasure I would have you seek is a pinch of golden sand. It is said to glow with the light of the sun and be found only on a certain beach. The discovery of this object is apparently made easier under very particular conditions, but I am not sufficiently familiar with the geography of your continent to even know where to start. I cannot provide you with the name of this treasure, but perhaps with your knowledge. My apologies. You do not need to hear the woes of some street corner fortune teller. In fact, I shall not ask payment of you this day. And please forget my unreasonable request. May fortune smile upon you. Alright, well it sounds to me like he's talking about the Valkyrum Dunes sun sand. Or storm sand, whatever it was called. But it could be something else. I'll look into that and we'll find that. We might even be able to just buy it at the auction house. Okay, so now we're going to talk to... We're ready to move on. Now we're going to be looking for someone named Kokoroon. I could probably just find him on my own, actually. But, oh, there he is. A Kakaroon. Yep, so let's head west. He's one of those aardvarks. Or armadillos, or whatever they are. Creepy looking things. But they're very polite and friendly. Alright, yeah, uh, is that him? Yup, there he is. We've talked to this guy before, I remember him. He said something about information or something like that. Kakaroon got cheap info, yeah? Yo, got big gill. Kakaroon got big info. Hmm. Hmm. Why is that all he, he's all, uh, why is that the only thing he's saying, I wonder? Oh, oh, okay, well, we got to give him money. I see, all right, so. Let's see, let's give him a thousand gil. gil. Hmm. No, nope, he didn't like that. Oh, all right. Word, word. Too far ahead. We need to. We haven't gotten to this part yet. Um. <laughs> I'm just a little overwhelmed right now. Ah, I got all turned around. Darn it. Okay, I know what we have to do. We have to go to the commission agency. Where is that? Oh boy. Oh, there. We were right by it. Ah, darn it. Okay. So, now we're going to look for someone named Rital, who's not far away. And he is in the commission's office. Agency, pardon me. The commission's agent agency. Got to find out how to get to him, though. I think he's inside a building somewhere. Looks like he's just to our right. How do we get in there, though? Hmm. Darn it. Oh, not here. Who's this? Baruki Waruki. Leave me alone. Okay. So this must be a new building that we can just yeah okay so let's this looks good the commissions agency yes there we are there's our here's who we're looking for Rital welcome to the commissions agency 
You have completed mercenary registration procedures? One moment, please. I have you registered as Oko under Salahim Sentinels. Your paperwork appears to be in order. I shall now give you an explanation of assault, the main type of work we have available here at the Commission's agency. Assault is the name given to a series of missions being conducted by the Imperial Army in the heart of enemy territory. Our function is to commission mercenaries with these missions as set forth by the Empire. To participate in an assault mission, you must first obtain an Imperial Army ID tag. The Imperial Army ID tag will identify you as a legitimate assault participant. The personnel at this counter will provide you with an Imperial Army ID tag, but please be aware that only one can be issued every 10 minutes, Earth time, and we, only, and we are only able to hold up to three for you. Mercenaries that have a confirmed mission will not be issued an Imperial Army ID tag. To once again become eligible to receive an Imperial Army ID tag, please report to the counter after completing an assault mission. Next, I shall explain how to sign up for an assault mission. You will see a number of counters here to your left. Each of these counters is responsible for a particular assault area. The personnel at these counters will give you a detailed explanation of the available assault missions. However, you will only be able to undertake assault missions that correspond to your mercenary rank. The Commission's agency is prohibited by Imperial law from disclosing mission information to persons without the proper level of clearance. <laughs> After selecting a mission, present your Imperial Army ID tag for verification. Assault missions are only open to mercenaries of level 50 or above. Please be sure your job is of the appropriate level before signing up. This concludes the explanation for assault participation. Next, I will list some points to remember when beginning an assault mission. Assault missions have a minimum member requirement. This figure represents the number of party members who must be present in order to begin the mission. Please form a party with a sufficient number of members who have all signed up for the same assault mission. After forming a party, make your way to the mission staging point located at the entrance to the applicable assault area. To facilitate a speedy journey to the staging point, I would suggest utilizing the runic portal within the Chamber of Passage, located opposite the building. Please be aware that in order to utilize the Runic Portal from the Chamber of Passage, you must first attune yourself to the Runic Portal found at the staging point in question. Under normal circumstances, use of the Runic Portal will deplete your Imperial standing. However, persons in possession of Assault Orders are exempt from this charge. Upon arriving at the staging point, a representative from the assault party should speak with the immortal on duty to receive verification of command. The verified representative should then activate the runic seal at the entrance to begin the assault mission. This concludes the basics for beginning an assault mission. Next we will cover the main points to consider during the mission itself. When an assault mission begins, you will be transported to an area where the level of enemies is based on the highest level member of your party. It is also possible to accept a voluntary level restriction during assault. In this case, your party will be sent to an area based upon the adjusted level limit. Once you have arrived in the area, the time limit for the mission will be announced. If you do not complete the mission objectives within this time, the mission will be considered a failure. To successfully complete a mission, it is necessary to activate the Rune of Release, 
that appears after the mission objectives have been fulfilled. It is possible to abandon a mission and be transported out of the assault area by using homing fireflies to guide you. Naturally, the mission will be considered a failure in this case. Before being transported to the assault area, all party members will be issued with homing fireflies. Homing fireflies are temporary items that cannot be taken out of the, an assault area. Other temporary items will also be available during assault missions. This concludes the assault mission explanation. Lastly, I will give you an overview of the rewards available upon successfully completing an assault mission. After successfully completing an assault mission, the Empire will award you with assault points. These points are only awarded for participation in assault missions and are accumulated separately for each assault area. Each area has specific items available that can be purchased in exchange for assault points. You can check your assault point totals and purchase items from the counters to your left. Thank you for visiting the Commissions Agency. Please do not hesitate to ask me any questions you may have concerning the assault mission application procedure. Alright, so wow, another huge thing to do in this game. Ugh, I might be forced to um, actually party up for the first time in order to do some of this stuff because it doesn't look like... I'm not sure if we can do these on our own or with trust, so we'll have to look into it. So now that we've talked to him, let's return to uh, Naja Salahim. Ah, stupid door. All right, we're back. Let's talk to Naja. Ah, I forgot to mention to you about Mog Lockers. Seeing as we're so concerned with the welfare of our employees, we offer a, law, a Mog Locker service to each mercenary for their own personal use. We know how much of a hassle it can be carrying around all your equipment and materials with you while you're trying to do your job. Of course, you gotta turn out your own pockets for it. You're gonna have to talk to... Fabrun in Stonesprint Square. If you went, if you want details on how to use a mog locker, get it, got it, good. Now get to work. That's an order. All right, so we'll talk to him in Stone. Where was it? Stonesprot? What the heck is that? Oh, there. Stonesprot. Okay, we'll head there right now. That's close. Go talk to Fabrun. Here's Fabrun. This is the Center for Lo Mog Locker Administration and Expansion. How may I help you? Wait, this isn't the auction house. Mog Locker Administration. Mog locker. Your mog locker can currently hold 30 items. Your mog locker can be expanded to hold 40 items for a fee of 4 Imperial Mithril pieces. Uh. Wait, this is, this, that's just how you get out. Mog locker administration. It appears your mog locker lease is currently expired. If you wish to extend your lease, please pay the fee of one Imperial Bronze piece. Lease extensions are valid for a period of 175 days. If you allow your lease to expire, you will lose access to the items stored within your Mog Locker. Yikes, this kind of scares me. I don't think I'm going to try and make do without the Mog Lockers, I think. Yeah. I'm going to do my best to just manage my inventory as it is. 
Well, we'll see. If we have to use that service, we will. And this is going to be the guy we talk to. So I just have to zone before I can talk to Naja again. So that's why I just came here quickly, just for something different. Let's just see if I can get my fisherman's gloves yet. Checking every day. Oh, I'm going to be so happy when I get those. No, nothing yet. Okay. Oh, well, if it isn't Oko, how you been? Getting used to the way things are done around here? You're in luck, because I happen to be in a pretty good mood lately. Your profits have been starting to look up since you joined us. Maybe you've brought us some good luck, traveler. I've also got this persistent feeling something good is going to happen today. I have returned. Oh, it's him. Gold armor? Someone was talking about gold armor before. It's about time. What the hell took you so long? Did you, did you deliver a supplies package to every blasted member of the Immortals? How dare you? Oh, but surely you didn't get lost on the way. Or get your supplies package stolen or anything like that now, did you? Would make a difference even if you were the Sandorian Temple Knights. You will call me Rylafal. Is that Tryon? Oh, that was your name. You'll have to forgive me. These damn foreign names are so hard to remember. You're gonna have to write that one down before I forget ya completely, Sir Knight. You would do well to remember. Lend me that sheet of parchment. Is he falling into the same trap we are? You gotta be pulling my tail. How in blazes do you read this? Ryla fun? You pronounce that like really fun? Or something? Ryla fun. <laughs> That is no N. The last letter is an L, I tell you. An L. You have a really weird sense of humor, Sir Rython. And I'm afraid you won't get any chuckles that way in Atragon. Our comedy is much more sophisticated than your nation's, obviously. But whatever. You've, accom you've accomplished your task, which means you finally made it to Salahim Sentinels. At least that says something for you. Well then, Rifle. Welcome to the world of private second class. You better prepare yourself for the jobs I'm gonna give ya. Second class? Oko, don't just stand there with your head in the clouds. Be a good role model and drum some mercenary spirit into this gentleman. Everything should be just peachy now, right? Rifle? Hey you, private second class. My name is pronounced Rifal. Rylafal. It's not that difficult. You must learn to address me with respect. Hey Rifle, wake up and smell the roses. Just who do you think you are anyway? A prince? M most certainly not. All right, then. Clean your ears out and listen up close. This is my board, and you are my pawns. You're expendable and easily replaceable. I can stand this absurdity no longer. Adventurer, do you find no fault with Naja's foul attitude? She thinks she is queen, but she is most certainly not. Obviously, 
you don't know beans about being a mercenary. Get out there in the mud with the boys and do your job. And next thing, you could be rolling in gill instead. I have no room here for sniveling belly acres. Find something better to do with your time than grumble and moan. Oko, drag this puck-brained adventurer to the commission's agency and have him sent off to the most hazardous task they can dig up. I refuse. I need no escort. In addition, I must attend a previous engagement. I will venture to the agency on my own time. Yeah, I have no idea what Tryon is doing here in Cognito. The plot thickens. She sent someone off after him, probably to spy. You. You. Good for nothing, mutton headed son of a troll. And I was in a good mood, too. Oko, if I were you, I'd curse the luck that brought you here. Go, and don't let that clot out of your sight. Yikes. She's pissed. Um. What does she say now? Like, that was crazy. What was Tryon doing here, huh? Hmm. Okay, well. I'm gonna do a little internal investigating into my own hometown of Sandoria to find out what's going on here. I know the people to talk to to find the gossip. Kakaroon. This is the guy that charges for information. Kakaroon got cheap info, ya? Yeah? You got big gill. Kakaroon got big info. You looking for something? You need big info. Hohoroon. Mercenary man. Look for Elvan with shiny, shiny armor. There he is. Oh, maybe Kakaroon see him. Kakaroon not see him, maybe. Mercenary man, Kokoroon like things that go clink clink, yeah? Do you have... I don't think I have one of those. Not on me. No? Well, Kakaroon like other types of clink clink. Sure. You can have a thousand gel. Oh, Kokoroon! Trade? Yo, trade to Kakaroon, yeah? Cheap info. Kakaroon only need one thousand gel, yeah? Alright, so, like, we gotta trade it with him, I guess, before he actually, I thought we already made the trade, but I guess that was just talking about it. We have to do it for real. Kakaroon loves sound of clink clink, yeah? Now, mercenary man, hear big info. Is that shiny, shiny armor elven? Wow, money well spent, huh? Hmm. Oh, there's that music we know. <laughs> well, there's no doubt about it, it's him. But why, I don't know yet. Ah, you are the adventurer I met in Salahim's Sentinels. Oh, we know you! You know us! <laughs> Try on! Surely you did not track me down at the behest of that foul-mouthed feline. Or perhaps you are here to search of information as well. Well, the particulars are not important. What matters is that we are both foreigners here. Have you not noticed anything suspicious about this place? They recruit mercenaries with what approaches desperation and are surrounded by fiends more bloodthirsty than the most savage orc. 
and yet this grand empire has such a small standing army. The more I investigate, the more I encounter the strangest things. Strange? You want to hear strange? Oh ho 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 run! Kakaro knows something strange. What's this? Well, out with it then. Shiny, shiny elven is scary, but it's okay. Everyone here knows this strange thing. Kakarun will tell you without clink clink. You no forget kind Kakarun, yeah? Most strange thing in Al Zabi is the astral candy sense. All who come to Al Zabi want to see this thing, yeah? Astral candescence? Yeah, astral candy sense. Shiny shiny elven not know that big info, yeah? You and Shiny Shiny Elven are mercenaries, yeah? You new to Al Zabi? I have heard of this object. An acquaintance of mine made some mention. Hohorun! It is spinning, spinning, always spinning, very pretty, yeah? Hmm, this warrants further investigation. Shiny Shiny Alvin, you no forget kind Kakaroon. You'll learn big info from Kakaroon. Next time you bring Clink Clink. Very shiny shiny, ya? Yeah? Kakaroon will never forget Shiny Shiny Alvin. Shiny Shiny Alvin will come back to Kakaroon with Clink Clink. Hmm, okay. So, that was interesting. So now we want to head to the Walar the Walara Temple. Let's see, where exactly is that? Oh, there. I see the Walara Temple. So let's see, we're right. It's right by a gate. So let's just take a little shortcut there. These two, who belong to the same Link Show, they've been stationed here for over 24 hours. Their their characters have just been sitting here. They must be waiting for something. Uh, very important. <laughs> so we want that one. So that one room over here is that place you can transport around to. And then over here, there's another little room that we haven't been in. Kabiyam. This is Walara Temple. Our doors are always open to those who seek knowledge. Yeah, I think we actually did talk to him before. Welcome to Walara Temple. Our doors are always open to those seeking knowledge. And why might a mercenary find himself in this place of peace? What is this? You wish to obtain permission to gaze upon the astral candescence within the Hall of Binding? I applaud your scholarly curiosity, and I would assist you in this endeavor if I could. However, I must regret to inform you that entry into the hall is forbidden by the Serpent Generals, for all but the servants of Walara. Even the Empress herself is not above this law. I am afraid I cannot help you. I grow weary of these refusals. Oh dear, oh dear. My good prin- uh, knight. Former knight. I have forsaken my knightly vows and joined the mercenary ranks. But that is beside the point. There is something I would ask you, servant of Walara. I will endeavor to answer any question, should it be within my power. <laughs> is not the Walara philosophy from the void of all things are born to the void all things return? Purported to be the fundamental tenet of existence? Yes, this is so. Then if all things eventually return to the void, would it matter if that process was accelerated? Sir Rylafal, that is not the intended meaning. Sage Walara, our founder, built this philosophy around the unavoidable destiny that all of creation shares. Then I would ask you, does the astral candescence interfere with the destiny of which you speak? I shall speak plainly. 
My reason for answering the Empire's call for mercenaries is simply to help stop this conflict and bring peace to the land. However, the direct cause of the conflict lies in the very object that the servants of Volara go to such great lengths to protect. I wonder if the treasure held by the city is even the object in question. How is it that the great majority of Al Zabi's citizens know not of this? Your questions and doubts are justified. However, even the servants of Walara do not entirely understand the nature of the astral condescence. Do you still plead ignorance? Very well, but heed my words, servant of Walara. If you keep to your current path, an even greater conflict awaits to engulf you. Do not think that I, Rylafel, will stand by in quiet acquiescence. I occasionally become the target of frustrated questioning by unbelievers. I feel my inadequacy most keenly when I fail to help a soul understand the teachings of Walara. Such trials are a part of my never-ending lessons on life. In fact, there was another who came to the temple quite recently, a Yagudo monk. He was possessed of a much gentler mien than the Golden Knight, but his questions were much the same. No matter their agenda, the servants of this temple are always ready to welcome those who express an interest in the teachings of Walara. Sage Walara once said, I alone do not possess all the answers. Let us ponder the mysteries of the universe together. Shared knowledge is the shortest path to enlightenment. You have come all the way to the capital of a distant nation. Perhaps you should take the opportunity to share your thoughts with others. I am certain you will find the practice beneficial. I seem to recall talk of the Sharabat Tea House becoming a popular gathering place for visitors of Al Zabi. Why not start your path to enlightenment there? All right then. Here is another guy, Kamden. Here you may gaze upon the Gordius, the very embodiment of Sage Valara's philosophies. Ugahar. Sage Walara was the founder of the philosophy from the void all things are born to the void all things return. Without a full understanding of these words, one shall never approach the fundamental truth of existence. And of course, Nadi. I seem to recall talk, yeah, you're saying the same thing. Alright, so let's head to the tea house and collect some more information. So here we are back at the, uh, uh oh, it looks like a cutscene is starting. Yeah. do not understand those curse those curse of Valara I was it was just as you described they did nothing but mock my queries oh there's the Yuguro cool he looks neat what am I to do Gesho Sir Rylafal I have acquired some information the astral wind I hear those words often on the lips of Al Zabi's citizens the astral wind. Yes, this is the name given to the ethereal breeze that stirs the air around the astral candescence. The wind arises whenever the astral candescence is set within its plinth, creating a sweet melody of unearthly timber. Your description makes this treasure sound more like some fairy's harp. I only repeat what was told to me by Nade, the man in Walara Temple. Ah, that one. When I pressed him with my suspicion that the astral candescence was the cause of these conflicts, he was not surprised in the least. It makes no sense. I cannot believe the astral candescence is worth sacrificing the lives of Atragan's citizens. Could this trinket be the true treasure the Empire seeks to safeguard? Please. 
With our current meager information, we have nothing more than meaningless conjecture. We must delve further into this mystery. I beg your leave. Gesho. I would stay away from Salahim Sentinels. Tja. Good advice. You. Aren't you an employee of Salahim Sentinels? Do not tell that Mithra of what you have heard here. So, how much have you learned? What have I learned about... I don't know, I've learned quite a bit about Salahim Sentinels, that's for sure. So I am not the only one who has realized. That company is where I endured the worst insults of my entire life. I've learned about... A little bit about the temple today. Oh, so you knew this as well. The sphere that floats in the center of the temple is called the Gordius. In the ancient past, when this Gordius was unraveled by the sage Walara, it is said he came to understand the fundamental principle of existence. And learned about the Empire. The Empire of Atragon is ruled by Nashmira II the 16th Empress of the Majab Dynasty. There are actually two capitals to help govern this immense nation, one on the east and one in the west. As you have probably guessed, the western capital is Al-Zabi, also known as the Imperial Capital. Have you learned about Ralafal's secret? What have you learned about Rylafal's secret. What is this? My secret? Explain yourself. I am nothing more than a mercenary who has left the life of a temple knight behind me. You are really... We know. A Sandorian prince. I... I, Rylafal, could never be that proud and dignified. Rylafel is really Prince Tryon. Foolishness! I, Tryon, could never be compared to that. Ah! Uh! Uh, hmm. You have me. Tryon, the first Daguil, is undone. Hmm. How could you have pierced my disguise? It must be your training as an adventurer. This goes beyond all patience. But now that you know my true identity, you shall pay the price for mocking the prince. I have a task for you. Deliver this letter to Monterley's Halver in Chateau d'Aguil. Tell him it comes from the famous sage Rylafal. The future of Atragon, as well as the Four Nations of Altana, depends upon the safe delivery of this letter. You and no other will be personally responsible for its arrival. Fail in this, and you shall never set foot in my nation's soil again. Yikes. Alright, we obtained the key item, Rylafel's letter. We'll do that right away. Let's just head right back to Sandoria to the Chateau d'Aguil and talk to Halver. I'll meet you guys there. I gotta find the closest uh, crystal. So here we are in the Chateau. So we'll wait for Halver to fade into existence. And he knows all the gossip that's going on around here. He obviously knows the Tryon is on a secret mission, so... 
Let's deliver the letter. Oko, are you as likely unaware all matters concerning the royal family pass through me? Um, show him. Yes, give him the letter. What have we here? A letter with writing so terrible I cannot even read that I am the intended recipient. This carry-on worm scrawl, I have seen its like before. The person who entrusted you with this message, the Lord of Illegibility, as I would call him. I am certain this letter is from the heir to the throne of Sandoria, the Prince Royal Tryon I Darguil. I am mistaken, you say? This letter was written by one sage, Rylafal, but this chocobo scratch could only be the work of Prince Tryon. I shall prove it to you. I have long attended to the prince and encountered many opportunities to decipher his unique style of writing. A moment, if you will. Astral Condes, Astral Juan, Duar. This truly is atrocious. I have no doubt this letter is from Prince Tryon, but I am afraid I cannot make out the meaning. Monterey's Halver. You look troubled. Perhaps I may be of assistance. General Rahal, your offer of aid is most generous. However, no need to be so humble. You have one of Tryon's indecipherable letters, do you not? How could you know? I have my sources. Some days ago, Prince Tryon abandoned the signing of some official documents. He placed a mannequin in his chair and fled the chateau in the dead of night. At least it was not a uh, forest hare this time. That is when I had Travials here shadow the prince's movements. He has had training in the arts of the ninja. Please continue the tale, Travials. Sir, Prince Tryon first made his way to Mora and passed himself off as an adventurer. Dear Altana, a member of the royal family tripsing about as an adventurer? The court will be mortified. From there, his highness boarded a ferry bound for the shores of Atragon. Atragon, and then? I quickly slipped aboard as well and guarded the royal person from the shadows. The ferry safely arrived in El Zabi with the prince none the wiser of my presence. After entering the city, Prince Tryon headed straight to a mercenary company and apparently signed some sort of contract. A contract? Surely not with his own name. This could escalate into an international crisis. There is nothing to fear on that count. His Highness travels the Empire under the assumed name of Rylafal. So no one in Al Zabi is aware of his true identity? I wouldn't say that, my lord. The Prince is wearing a suit of gilded gold plate and is not subtle in his information gathering. Great goddess. Then he is not disguised at all. No, my lord. Come to think of it, I have seen this adventurer's face in the very same mercenary company. This letter must be the very same document I witnessed in the prince's hand at the Shararat Tea House. I am wounded that Prince Tryon does not have more trust in us, his loyal subjects, and I do wish he would act with a little more discretion. That is a matter we shall discuss anon. First, we must learn the reason for Prince Tryon's seemingly frequent trips to the nation of Atagon. What is the current state of the Near East? Is the prince in any danger? Do not be concerned. I am sure that Trivials has learned much from following the prince. Please enlighten us. Sir, Raphael Ralephal, uh, Prince Tryon, investigated the following facts. Four years ago, Jaizan, the former emperor of Atragon, and his wife both succumbed to the same illness. Yes, I remember. The kingdom of Sandoria sent her condolences. The illness was quite virulent, as I recall. The beastmen who dwell on the western borders of the nation used this as an opportunity to cease offering tributes. <laughs> what more would you expect from those savages? Though the empire's long war with the eastern nations was at a stalemate, they could not afford to grow complacent. The main body of the Imperial Army remained focused on the east. Meanwhile, 
The beastmen of the Mamul Ja Sava Jalans and Halvang territory unfurled a banner of rebellion on the abandoned Western Front. It was not long before they were joined by an army known as the Undead Swarm. The military might of Sandoria is fully occupied with the Orcish Horde alone. If it were three separate armies, even a mighty nation like Atragon must flounder. Of a certain, sir. The capital itself has recently been the target of beastmen invasions. Atragon now finds herself without the resources to even repair the walls of al Zabi. No matter how impressive a swordsman Prince Tryon is, we cannot allow him to remain in such a dangerous place. I must take this matter up with those responsible for protecting the royal household. Bring me General Cirilla. Uh-oh. She's in trouble. She's gonna get it now. General Cirilla, it appears a member of the Royal Knights has managed to track down the location of our wayward prince. And where, pray tell, would that be? The Empire of Atragon. Atragon? The nation recruiting mercenaries? Yes. Then it stands to reason that the Temple Knights should stand little chance of finding the prince. I seem to recall ordering you to take measures that would prevent this sort of thing from happening again. Am I mistaken? No, Monterey Solver. I have been derelict in my duty. It is good that you recognize your failings, but you shall be made to take responsibility for the situation. Yes, my lord. Forgive my directness, Monterey's Halver, but I feel I must ask. Why would Prince Tryon travel to such a distant land? Does he feel so strongly about the Empire? Prince Tryon visited Al Zabi once before, when the Emperor was yet hale and healthy. The incident that occurred is most likely connected to all this. However, now is not the time to be telling tales of the past. This matter has grown beyond the realm of our judgment. We must bring this letter to Prince Puge immediately. Prince Puge, what is all this commotion? How like Tryon to rush off without so much as a word. He has earned a reputation for action being before thought. Your Highness, this is the letter we believe to have been penned by your brother. Tra Travials may have provided enough keys to unlock the rambling script. This may require some time. Hmm. There was no need to convene a meeting of linguists, Halvert. Let me see this letter. This time, my brother's actions may have a positive side. He writes on the current state of the Empire. We must turn our attention to the Near East, where a battle on the scale of the Crystal War is brewing. What in Vanadil is happening over there? There is an overwhelming reason for the Beastmen attacks on Al Zabi. I will read to you what my brother has written, word for word. At the center of this conflict is a treasure known as the Astral Condescence. This object emits an enchanting melody, unheard by mortal ears. The melody envelopes and fills those nearby with a boundless energy, be they person or Beastmen. The citizens of Al Zabi call this melody the Astral Wind. I believe I have come to understand Prince Tryon's ap apprehensions. You are not alone in that feeling. Then we are in agreement. Halver, have messengers sent to the other nations immediately. We must convene an emergency meeting of the nations. Understood, Your Highness. And the location? The location. Send a request to Juno to secure a meeting room in the Grand Duke Palace. At once. Prince Puge, what shall be done about Prince Tryon's frequent excursions outside of the kingdom? I do not wish to be rude, but we are well aware of how the prince reacts to attempts to dissuade him from his course. That is true. Having the heir to the throne playing at being a mercenary will not improve Sandoria's image in the eyes of the world. But the solution is simple. I shall write my brother a letter. A letter, your highness? Yes, I have an idea. But I shall need a volunteer to deliver it safely to Al-Zabi. 
I suggest Travials. He is well versed in the geography of the region. Excellent. Let it be done. I will not fail you, your highness. Highness, this is Oko. He brought Prince Tryon's letter back from the Near East. Is that so? I do not approve of my brother's rash actions, but he does have an eye for trustworthy messengers. Oko, I am sure you are exhausted from your long journey, but your presence will be required at the meeting in Juno. We may have need of your testimony. Oko, arrangements for the meeting will be made in all haste. Make your way to Juno as soon as your preparations are complete. I never thought the situation to be this grave. We'll head there right away, so let's head to Rulud Gardens. So the audience chambers should be straight ahead. Oh, there we are. Cutscene starting. Oh, looks like everyone's here. You have gathered here today at the request of the Kingdom of Sandoria. I thank you on behalf of the King. This is the first time in history that an emergency summit of this nature has taken place. The issue I lay before you is beyond the scope of a single nation. Prince Puge, the adventurer you have permitted to attend the summit has arrived. Thank you for coming, Oko. Allow me to begin by explaining the events that have led to today's meeting. It began when Oko, mercenary and adventurer, arrived at the gate of the Chateau d'Aguil bearing a letter of extreme importance. The contents of that letter prompted me to call the nations together. It was penned by a sage known as Rylefal and described in painstaking detail the current state of Atragon, the Empire. This is the same nation that has the port in a frenzy over mercenary recruitment? The very same. I speak of the Near East nation, the Empire of Atragon. Atragon is now under pressure from three separate beastmen armies, and Al-Zabi, the mighty capital itself, is in danger of falling. Great Altana, the Silent Empire. It was once called that. You may have been too young to know this, Your Highness, but the rest of us should remember. I am aware of the term. In the time of the Great War, the Empire possessed an army greater than the combined forces of the Allied nations. Yet not a single soldier was sent in response to calls for aid. My apologies, you are well versed in history. But knowing this, you should also know that we have no obligation to lift even a finger for Atragon, no matter how serious her predicament. Why, Volker, always so calm and cool. You've grown hot and bothered, and your speech is most cruel. You should understand, Dr. Shantoto. You were there on that battlefield. Who knows how much suffering could have been avoided if we'd had the help of the Empire. On the contrary, my dear musketeer, we owe them more than you can imagine, I fear. What do you mean? Atragon has taken many countries under her yoke a ferocious nation that has even barred fangs at the Far Eastern folk. Calling the Empire to help in our cause would be like freeing us from demons in return for dragon jaws. That may be true, but even the close relationship Atragon had with Tafnasia. That subject is not the issue here, I know. Dr. Shantoto, why did Windurst open Mora's port to the Empire? My nation's actions are none of your concern. At least we have a backbone. When will Bastok learn? You go too far, Dr. Shantoto. Enough! I do not call you here to speak of possible troop contributions. Then why are we here, Your Highness? Our main concern is the treasure thought to be at the center of this conflict, the Astral Candescence. Astral Candescence? It is described as some manner of musical instrument, but apparently is much more than that. 
This instrument is said to produce a phenomenon known as the astral wind, a breeze that blows from an unidentifiable source. It creates a melody in the timber unheard by mortal ears. I'm confused. How can there be a melody if nothing can be heard? Astral wind. Hmm. This is all very unusual, but I'm sure we've all seen stranger things before. An unidentifiable source. In Windurst, there is no shortage of magical gadgets. Pens that write by themselves, brooms that sweep on command. A breeze. I mean, they even have that Cardian band. That's similar, don't you think, Dr. Shantoto? Astral wind. Dr. Shantoto, is everything all right? Oh! If it's automatic instruments you need, our children make such things before they learn how to read. The problem lies in the power of the wind. The wind? It envelopes those close by and fills them with a mysterious strength. There are few who can resist the lure of this energy, even among the beastmen. If the instrument is that dangerous, why not just give it to the beastmen or smash it out of hand? That is what common sense would tell us, if it were up to an individual or even an entire town. What are you trying to say? What if this decision lay in the hands of a nation? Even if it posed a threat to your own citizens, if that treasure could one day be your salvation, would you not choose to protect it? How could a mere instrument hold that kind of power? The sage who composed this letter is afraid. Afraid that this ancest afraid that this astral candescence will one day be the catalyst for a conflict to rival the Crystal War. No, Prince Puge, as a representative for an entire nation. You would do well not to throw those words around so lightly. My apologies. This is merely based on the conjecture of a sage. Why don't we have Oko, who has seen and heard these things in person, give us his account? We cannot make a decision based on this tale alone. A nation has a responsibility to maintain soldiers and weaponry for the defense of its people. And for a city in this situation, I would go so far as to say that some sort of secret weapon is almost a necessity. In any case, it doesn't seem that this astral candescence presents any immediate danger to the people of Al-Zabi. I would say that was entirely true, if you were me and I were you. Oko, I came to a conclusion after you left the chateau. I wish to hear your honest opinion. Hmm. Yes. Excellent. I knew asking you here was the right decision. I rely upon your vast experience as an adventurer. What is the astral candescence? If it is such an important treasure, then why not secret it away inside the palace instead of placing it in the area most vulnerable to beastmen attacks? I sense some hidden purpose for this dangerous object. Do you have any thoughts on the matter, Oko? Any thoughts? Uh, I don't really know of any of these things. What is this Gordius? The Gordius. I have heard this name somewhere before. What manner of person is this? Not a person? So, it is a holy relic enshrined in Wallara Temple. In the distant past, Sage Wallara once unraveled the Gordius and grasped the fundamental principles of existence. And now a host of like-minded scholars toil day and night to discover the same loose thread to unravel the Gordius for themselves. It appears that people of the Empire search for quite different truths than the ones we seek. Oh! Too much time in the cathedral for Dustin's little boy. The mind is a tool you must sharpen, not a child's toy. Do you mock me, Dr. Shantoto? You look for your answers in all the wrong places. Shall I bring a little hope to your long, dreary faces? What are you hiding, Shantoto? The servants of Valara control the Hall of Binding, the treasure's little nest. The Hall of Binding is defended by the Serpent Generals, the best of the best. The Serpent Generals? A name I have heard, 
each one is said to be worth a thousand soldiers. The astral condescence is strictly monitored by the Walara Temple, according to the adventurer's speech, but the treasure is kept in an area that the beastmen can easily reach. And there we find the serpent generals, the strongest of the strong, plus mercenaries like Oko to help them, if I'm not wrong. Yes, there does seem to be some contradiction to be found here. You see, this is a huge game of set the trap and wait, and the astral condescence is the very tasty bait. Of course, why didn't I see it? But wait, this creates a whole new set of questions. Why would they want the beastmen in the city? There are some things that even I cannot divine. It's time to sit back and wait for a sign. But it does seem that this problem lies at the center of some grand plan. Without concern for the people of Al Zabi. We need more information. Yes, an individual of keen wits and sharp senses. My lords, I have a suggestion. Oko was employed as a mercenary in the Empire. However, he is a distinguished adventurer who will not sell his principal for a bag of gill. I point to the safe delivery of the Sage's letter as proof of his dedication. A long journey without promise of reward. And I am sure that all of you present have had numerous beneficial dealings with adventurers. They have earned our trust and respect. That is why I put forth the motion that we have Oko return to the Empire and fight as a mercenary. We cannot allow any more blood to be spilled by beastmen. Even should that blood belong to another nation's people. And if Oko can improve his standing enough to bring him closer to the Imperial Palace, we may learn the ultimate goal of the Empire. You'll find no argument here. Adventurers have been the quiet heroes in many of Bastok's darkest moments. An idea that creates less work for us will not find me making a needless fuss. How does the Duchy of Juno stand on this? In agreement. The linking of our auction house services has strengthened the ties between Juno and the Empire. But economical matters are superseded by politics. All in favor? One moment. As Ralafal warned, this problem is not likely to remain constrained within the borders of the Near East. All the lands of Vanadil, including our four nations. Urgum is the word for world in the language of Atragan. And this lurking threat could plunge it entirely into chaos. We lay this mission before you, Oko. Will you consent to take up this burden? That's what I'm here for. Have our thanks, Oka. Naturally, we will do all in our power to aid you in this task. It is a trifling amount, but perhaps you might use this Atragon coin on your travels. That treasure is more than simple bait. An astral relic can and will seal your fate. The Empress goes too far in her game. I'm curious to see how it turns out all the same. Well, it's rhyming, so it's obviously Shantoto talking. I don't know why it was sort of question marked. That pretty much completes everything we need to do here in Juno. So now we're going to head back to White Gate, and uh, we're, we're going to go to the Tea House. Back to the Tea House. To... Collect more gossip. So which one's closest? I think it's going to be this one right here. So I'll meet you guys at the tea house. Greetings. You are Oko, an adventurer from the Western Lands, yes? And a registered mercenary of Salahim Sentinels? Ah, I must introduce myself. My name is Gesho, and I have also arrived from the Western Continent. I am a Yagudo. Do not be alarmed. I am merely a wandering monk who seeks to find a master in this foreign nation. Just like you, I have entered the service of one Naja Salahim. 
I apologize for this sudden intrusion. But are you acquainted with the mercenary known as Rylafal? Ho ho, you plead ignorance. Would you know him if I described his golden armor? Well, I guess the jig is up. Uh, no, that guy. In any case, I have something from him to give to you. The Empire of Atagan and the nations of the Far East have been at war for decades. This is a long time to be fighting. Such a conflict would drain the resources of both sides and put considerable strain on the citizenry. They are indeed suffering, particularly in the Far East. This war has exacerbated several other serious matters. The same must be said of Atragan. Despite the size and strength of their army, they must still look to foreign shores for mercenary reinforcement for the defense of the capital. The armies of both nations have met on the field of battle numerous times, building trenches and fortifications to stall the advance of the enemy. Now the front line can move neither forward nor backwards. Trench warfare. If I were the Empress, I would want a weapon of great destructive force, or some sort of magic, or even send spies to the enemy cities or main travel routes to destroy their supply lines. Both sides have those options, of course. Why do you grow silent? Have I said something untoward? No, it just is sometimes hard to believe you are a simple mercenary with such talk of strategy escapes your lips. Ah, you are right. I must be more careful. And I am not the only one, it seems. You are rather well versed in the Far Eastern predicament, considering you are meant to be a uh, Mindarshan Yagudo. Nay, I merely repeat what I have heard. We should be focusing on... Hmm, Gesho? What is wrong? A skulker in the shadows. Show yourself. Travi Travials. You know this man? Hmm. His cover's blown. Oh, he looked... Puge. What has he told Cirilla? No, Halver was the one who... Great Altana. Is something wrong? Gesho, I am sorry to cut our conversation short, but I must return to Sandoria. It sounds serious. Has something befallen your homeland? What has that to do with the likes of you? My apologies. I have overstepped my boundaries. No, I had no cause to berate you so. This man is a knight of Sandoria. My name is Travials. Please forgive my intrusion. Hmm. You move like one trained in the Far Eastern art of the ninja. You have a keen eye. Travials will stay here for a time. Please contact him if you have need of me. Understood. Although we stand on different sides of the wall, we are both patriots. I am certain we shall meet again. Let us continue our conversation anon. Yes, I would like that. Farewell, Rylafal. You must not keep our, your countrymen waiting. I am in your debt. Farewell, Gesho. And so he left for his homeland. I imagine he would be docking in Mora at about this time. That one holds himself like a king. Before I forget, I have something for you from Travials. Very well, Oko. I take my leave of you here. If our president should discover us loitering in the street, it will mean our heads.
of the four nations of Altana have gathered in Juno for an emergency summit. And you are certain one of our mercenaries was seen there? Yes, your magnificence. You have served us well. You may go. Dismissed. Sir. We were right to keep him occupied. They have taken the bait, just as we expected. Grand Vizier. Do not underestimate these adventurers. We must proceed with the next part of the plan. All right, we received a little bit of money from Gesho. Um, all right, so now let's head back to Naja and report in with her. Right over here, nice and close. So nice of them to put all the important things close together so it's easy for us. Hello, Oko. What happened to our puffed up over pretty night boy? Don't tell me you came back here without him. What? I really hope my ears are deceiving me. Tell me that again. Um, he went home. I'm not gonna tell her it's a prince. Are you telling me that blockheaded knight took off without so much as a buy your leave, Miss? President? He's got a lot of nerve to test the patience of Naja Salahim! And don't think you're off the hook either. Why didn't you go after him? Surely you didn't think that a mercenary was free to do as he pleases, did you? And you didn't go leaving Al Zabi ignoring the fact that you were on one of my errands, did you? Or had you forgotten? Both you and Rylafal have signed a binding contract with me. Or have you forgotten? You belong to me! Forever! Always! Until death! You mercenaries are my pawns! Scum! If you had the free time to be gallivanting to foreign countries, then you should have been signing up for a bunch of missions. You should have been contributing to the success of this company. That's what's known as a team player. It's not too late for you. Chase him to the end of the world if you have to. But track down that Rylafall. You know what? Maybe I'll just let him go. I've had enough of this belly aching to last a lifetime anyway. Come to think of it, didn't he say he was from the Middlelands? He seems so intent on sticking around here, I wonder why he chose to pack up and leave all of a sudden. Oh well, at least he's out of my hair. That's a load off my mind. Maybe you are a dose of good luck, Oko. Oh gosh. Here's an extra bonus for you. Go on, take it. I'm glad you decided to walk in my door. It's okay. You can tear up a little bit. Take that feeling and burn it deep into your heart. I'll be using your gratitude as an example in the next recruitment drive. All right, and she very generously gives us a little bit of money. Lots of people like to give us money. It's it seems to be quite a thing here, huh? We need to leave and zone out of here and then come back. So, I'll uh, maybe just pop on over to Sandore or something like that to do something.
All right, so here we are at the auction house. I just want to see if I can get some Vulcrum Sun Sand, because I really don't have time to go there and get it. Um, other misc. Here it is, Sun Sand. Is this? Yeah, this is it. There's lots of them. Price history. Ooh, pretty expensive. Yikes. That's way more than I wanted to spend. Hmm, maybe I should just go get it. Oh, God. I mean, it's a free item to get. You just pick it up when it's a hot day at that boat by Selbina. Oh, my gosh. Fine, I'll... Let's see, I'm not going to pay 30000 Let's just try twenty. If we can't get it for that, we'll find another way to get it. Okay, forget it. That's unreasonable. I'll get the sand myself. Um, Alright, let's do something else then. Um, hmm... Okay, I know who we can talk to. Um, we're gonna go talk to Fachacha, who was that Taru Taru who's really into cooking, whose son botched up the... I think it was her, wasn't it? The, whose son botched up the grocery thing? Right here, yeah, that's her. Pachacha. cha, -cha. Well, hello there. You're looking chipper today. Hey. You can think of a better greeting than that. Where are your manners? Have we even said thank you to this adventurer after all you've put him through? Yeah, yeah, thanks. Sorry for my son's poor manners. I raised him to know better. Anyway, did you need anything? What? That giant pumpkin head Galka has gone missing? Now that you mention it, I haven't seen the oaf since he stole our groceries. I know what happened to that pumpkin head. He disappeared. Disappeared? What do you mean he ween by that? I mean what I said. He disappeared, just like a ghost. Whoosh! And he was gone. If this is your doing, I didn't do nothing. The food tastes the same, don't it? It smells the same, don't it? I knew it. You better come clean, boy. That oversized pumpkin head used half the food up already. So I just made it again. All I did was synthesize a few. Synthesize? Don't tell me you've been dabble-wabbling in alchemy. <laughs> She's very loyal to the culinary craft, I guess. No son of mine will be an alchemist. How dare you start alchemy behind my back again! No matter the reason, using alchemy to create your ingredients only displays your lack of skill as a chef! L leave me alone. I never wanted to learn cooking in the first place. You never told me that. Yes, I did. I did. You just never listened. Either way, anyone who uses alchemy in cooking is no son of mine. And I don't need no mama that won't let me do alchemy. I'm leaving. Why would he want to do alchemy anyway? What's so exciting about a bunch of fuddy duds doing hocus pocus? Well, we're more of an alchemist than a chef, and oh, we make some good money with our alchemy. We don't make any money from our cooking. What do we do next? Let's see here. Uh, well, we're gonna go to the alchemist guild now. So that was north of town, I believe. Yes. So that's where the young guy headed, so let's just go there and see how he's feeling about all this. Now that he's gotten something off his chest. If 
I believe the alchemist... Is this it? Is... Yep. So here's the alchemist guild. We haven't really been here yet. Looks a lot like the tea house. What do you want? I know you saw me fight with my mom, so just leave me alone. Mom's always been like that. All she ever cares about is cooking, cooking, cooking. She thinks that alchemy is boring compared to cooking, but she doesn't know nothing. I think alchemy is awesome. I think it's so much that I'm even studying it on my own, on my very own. The effects of the pinch of prism powder should have worn off by now, but I measured the recipe wrong. He's going to be invisible forever, and it's all my fault. If that pumpkin head hadn't eaten it, it could have been you, too. I'm really sorry. We gotta get him back to normal. I've been asking around ever since the pumpkin head disappeared. Someone told me that a rainbow berry is growing in the Wajom woodlands. It's invisible, but occasionally someone finds one. One person who harvested a berry ate it on the spot. His invisibility suddenly went away, and a bunch of scary monsters attacked him. That fruit probably does other stuff too, but I bet it could also turn our pumpkin head friend back. Could you please, pretty please, bring me that rainbow berry? I went looking for it as soon as I heard, but I couldn't find it anywhere. I bet you could though, because you look really strong. In the meantime, I'm going to try to lure that Galka in with some yummy smelling food. If I find him, I'll bring him to the tea house where his friends are. Let's meet there, okay? Remember, meet at the tea house. Let's just do this little mini quest then. So let's head out to the Wajom Woodlands and look for a rainbow berry. We gotta make sure we have sickles with us, which we do. Let me see how many we have. 23. Hopefully that's enough. If not, we have more in our mog storage, but... Okay, so this is the southern port. Um, and this is where this place, I believe, goes... This, I believe, goes to the wooded area that we want to go. Yeah. And we do have a map for the area, so... Yeah, let's just pop in. This is our first time checking out this woodlands. Let's check it out and look for this rainbow berry. Here is the Wajom Woodlands. So we're looking for harvesting spots. Um, E8 and 9. Oh, way over there? Oh, that's far. Looks like we're, oh, way over here there's some harvesting spots, apparently. And at H10 and 13. H10 and 13. Wow, far away. We got a long way to go. Okay, I'm going to take... Uh, it looks like there is a survival guide here. So what I'm going to do is um, take a chocobo to that. Um, uh, well, we'll take we'll take our red raptor. Okay, so we're at H10. So this is the first place where there is some uh, harvesting spots. So we got to turn on a few of our uh, records of eminence, of course. What do we... I have to drop a few of them. I guess we can drop that one now. We've done it. And this one. 
There's two we want. We want the region for this place. Um, this one, Wajong, Wajong Woodlands. And then we want a harvesting one for this area. Let's fight ten monsters and look for harvesting spots. Here's another Amar Ameritat. I don't see any, uh, yeah, I don't see any harvesting spots, so let's just go south. Look at this creature, a puck. It's like a little dragon crossed with, like, an insect. Wow, there's a whole swarm of them here. We'll fight all these, I guess. Well, what choice do we have, right? I think we aggroed all of them. My brothers had a dog named Puck. Yeah, she was a sweet little thing. Well, most of the time. So what are we at now? That was the sixth one. This will be seven. Okay, I'm heading down to H13. Oh, there's a harvesting spot. We found one. Item, sickle, use. That didn't work. Oh, we got the, wow, we got rainbow berry on our first try. Wow. Hold on, yeah. So I still want to get this Records of Eminence, I think. A clump of Imperial tea leaves. All right. I'm going to head south just to see if there's more harvesting spots down here, because I think there is. Yeah, we'll still get the Records of Eminence, that and the battling one. And I'll probably still get that uh, survival guide in the far west there, just so we can 
warp to this place sooner. So this looks very similar to that other area we were at, huh? The other bushy area in the last episode. All right, keep heading south. Oh, oh, I see some purple in the ground over there. Fight a few more pucks. There's one. At our harvesting spot. If that's what this is, I don't know. It looks different, huh? It looks dark. P pro peculiar footprints. An aura of irrepressible might threatens to overwhelm you. Yikes. And here we have an engraved tablet. Not sure what that is. Mm, that's going to be for some sort of quest, I guess. Ah, there's a harvesting spot. I think. Maybe not. Let's see. <laughs> No, it's something else. God, there's a lot of things in the ground here, huh? Hmm. Everything except what we need. Harvesting spot. Okay, too bad. All right, so we're going to go to the next area where there's harvesting spots. Oh, it's far away. Okay, i got to head back north. Okay, so here's, um, I see a spot already where we can harvest. So we're here at E, E8 and the southern part. So this area has harvest spots. Let's go to the first one here. Yeah, it looks like we can do this one multiple times, which is good. some tea leaves. More tea leaves from that. So let's look around here. We might be able to find another harvest spot. And we still need to fight a few more monsters. get two out of this one. Uh, yeah, that's right. Harvesting spot. It's good. Ah, oh, darn, it went away. We got marjoram. Yeah, I'm just gonna look around for one more... One more glowing spot. Oh, look at this monster. Let's fight this. A Gariol. That's different. Never seen anything like that before. That's a giant rhinoceros. Neat. Yep, here I'll even use my savage blade on him. Why not? Man, he's a strong one.
Don't suppose this is a notorious monster. So, there we are. We got 10. That was our 10th one. And we got Arachne Obi. And Obi is like a, a waste. Oh, yeah. Enhances resist slow effect. Hmm. Alright, well, this sapling is pissed at us. So, let's destroy him. Alright, I'm gonna head to that survival guide. There's no s more harvesting spots here, so hopefully we find one more somewhere. It's no big deal. We'll find one. Well, here's the other tower. So that book should be around here somewhere. A little bunch of trolls around here. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it's a survival guide, all right. So let's activate it. <clears throat> all right, so there we go. Now we can get back here anytime we want. I'm just going to keep on wandering around until I find another harvest point and I'll be right back. All right, so here we go. Complete the records of eminence. And we received 12 more sickles. I had a feeling that was going to happen. Well, since we're here, and it's still sparkling, let's keep on harvesting. We've got a bag of Sim Sim, fresh marjoram. Eastern ginger root. Oh, we're getting a lot from this spot. I wonder if I still have a macro set for this. No, I don't. I got rid of that. A bag of coffee cherries. That's interesting, huh? God, we got at least we got about five just from this one alone. Wow, that's interesting, huh? Moiba moibua grass. All right. So that's about it. So I guess we can head back now. I'm just looking around to see if I, because we got four out of five. If we can find just one more harvesting spot. I'm not going to go that far out of my way though for it. If we can't find one more. No, I don't see another spot. What's this? A wellspring. I guess we can do some fishing here, huh? Okay. We're gonna head back now to White Gate.
back at the tea house where we were told to come to meet. Let's talk to Ulamal, who started this whole quest. I've already heard from Topok Hippok. You went to the forest to bring back our rainbow berry to save the boss. It looks like Topok is here, too. Where is the boss? Katiba, Ulamal, sorry for worrying you. Boss? Is that really you? He was all over the wild steak I cooked. I had to stock a lot of meat broth to make it that juicy. Oh, you found that rainbow berry. I knew you looked strong. Thanks so much. Now we can turn this big oaf back to normal. Now, hold on just a second there. I have to squeeze the juice out. Okay, it's ready. Drink it all in one gulp, and we'll be able to see you again. Gehey! Ouch! It burns! My body feels like it's on fire! I'm... I'm melting! Boss, are you okay? Gehey! <laughs> Just a little joke, kids. I've never felt better. Boss, I'm so glad you're okay. Thanks, kid. Ah! Where's the pumpkin? Oh, my hat? It looks like I've lost it somewhere. Boy, am I hungry. I'm gonna go get something to eat. <laughs> so, that's what he really looks like. Mom! I saw everything, son. Well done. You better study alchemy properly from now on so you don't make you wake the same mistake again. Y you mean you're really going to let me study alchemy? It's your life. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> Mom, I'm sorry for being a bad kid. I still want to help you with cooking while I study alchemy. Oh, I'm so happy. Could these be tears? I... I think I'm gonna cry. Had you fooled there for a second though, didn't I? Um, sorry to interrupt. Such a touching moment, but... Would you like to join the Epicureans? Our gourmet society will turn you into a new woman. Our priorities are eating, cooking, eating, gardening, eating, gardening, and... Oh, did I mention eating? Well, usually they leave out gardening, but I think it's worth mentioning. I'm the master of gardening here. If you want to know what's most important in gardening, I'd have to say earth. A wise man once said, Seek ye the chosen ground, and ye shall be greatly rewarded. That was in the year... Okay, Ulamal. We got the point. Anyway, I'm Katiba, and I tirelessly devote both day and night to the development of new recipes. We would love to incorporate your Windurstian cuisine as well. Oh, I see you can't resist my superior abilities. Do I have a choice? I suppose I'll join. Topak, I see a lot of potential in you too. Won't you join me in developing new recipes? M me Um, if you can use me, sure. It looks like our numbers are increasing. Welcome to the club, Fachacha and Topak. A hearty welcome into the Epicureans. Thanks. Thank you. I can't wait to learn a word about new Eastern cuisine from everyone. It's time to return home for now, though. You also have our thanks. Please accept this small gift for your services. We've been thinking about what to get for you. And we decided that this would be useful on your adventures. Come again anytime you want to taste test our dishes. All right, we receive an Imperial Silver Piece. All right, getting a lot of those lately. All right, well, we're not done with these two, but uh, we'll, we'll need to talk to them again. But um, 
In the meantime, let's head on to other things. So I got the sun sand. Now I want to buy a few other things here. I want to get, if I can, I'm looking for white honey. white honey. So individually they're about 5,000 and for a group of 12 it's about 60,000. So I'm just going to buy these three. Yeah, I'm just going to buy these three that are available here because I only need three and that's 15. Hopefully we can get them for 5,000 each. Okay. Did we get it? Alright, so we got the honey. Now, um, we're pretty much out of money, but let me just see if we got our fisherman's... Fisherman's gloves. <clears throat> I'm obsessed with these. I'm not going to rest until we get them. No, nothing yet. Okay. So, back to Atragon. So, we've come back from doing a little shopping at the auction house in Sandoria. We got the three pots of white honey, and uh, we got that pinch of Vulcrum sun sand. The first thing I'm going to do is just quickly go back to the coffee shop, or the tea house, I mean, and talk to Kabia. She was the one that's hanging over here, hanging out over here with, what's his face? Oh, Katiba. K Katiba, I guess her name is. Ulamal and Katiba. We'd like to show our appreciation for your help by teaching you one of our special recipes. The list of recipes we have created is quite long, but Ulamal would like to keep them secret, so I will have to give them out bits at a time. Yes. Listen closely. I'm going to teach you the recipe for... Oh, yes, this is a good one. A cup of imperial coffee. All right. Got your ink and parchment ready? Here goes. First, you will need a fire crystal. Then just mix together a pot of maple sugar, a bowl of coffee powder, and a flask of distilled water. Unfortunately, you don't seem to have enough skill to make it. Do you have any friends who can cook? Perhaps you can ask them to help. Ulamal wants to keep the recipe a secret, but I personally would like as many people as possible to enjoy Near Eastern cuisine. Talk to her again and we get a different cutscene. The chai here always tastes absolutely wonderful. If I don't have my eight cups a day, I just can't function. I'm not the only one either. That's why business is booming here. Every time I leave the house, I find myself wandering here inadvertently. Would you like a sip too?
Isn't this a beautiful teacup? I always drink my chai from a glass cup. I wouldn't have it any other way. I would really use an Ermic Helvasi right now. It goes so well with tea. I thought you were being awfully quiet. So you were thinking about an Ermic Halvasi again, were you? Just forget it already. You aren't upset about it? He had the nerve to snatch it right out of my hands as I was about to take a bite. Of course, I don't think it's fair, but still, we can't make another Ermic Halvasi without any pots of white honey. Hey, you've never tried an Ermic Halvasi, have you? It's a famous Near Eastern confectionery. Ulamal and I simply can't get enough of it. We finally managed to get the ingredients and whip up a batch ourselves, but our boss nabbed it right in front of our noses. I'm going to make jelly out of that guy if I ever get my hands on him. I don't think Ulamal will ever be the same again if we don't do something. Do you think you could bring us three pots of white honey? If you help us, we'll let you have an Ermic Helvasi too. Sorry to bother you for such a menial task, but we are counting on you. All right, well, we prepared and got those ahead of time. So where is it? There they are, white honey, three of them. Oh, you managed to find some pots of white honey. Now we can make Ermic Helvasi. Thank you. Have some chai until Katiba makes a fresh batch of Ermic Helvasi for us. Katiba, is it ready yet? Not yet. Katiba, not yet, Ulamal. Not yet, I said. I didn't even say anything. Sorry, it's become a habit. <laughs> All finished. Let me know how it tastes. It's finally time. Oh, how I have waited. It can't be. Oh god, that guy's the worst. My Irma Calvasi. My... Ugh. Come on, things aren't so bad. How could he? Right before my very eyes. Twice. I suspected that this would happen, so I made sure to hide it where he couldn't find it this time. Huh? Then what was that a moment ago? The softest Tavnasian sheep liver I could find. It's a delicacy, so he has no room to complain. Oh, well, isn't that nice? Tea time for me. You and the boss are the same when it comes to Ermic Halvasi. Like a couple of kids. Oh, and here's your portion. I'm sure you won't be able to get enough of it after the first bite. So I'll go ahead and teach you the recipe. Are you ready? I'm only going to say this once, so listen closely. First, you need a fire crystal. Then mix together a stick of Selbina butter, a bag of semolina, a handful of pine nuts, and a jug of Selbina milk. Oh, yes, and the pots of white honey you just brought me. That should be all you need, but I think that it will still be rather difficult if you have no experience in making sweets. All right, and we obtain a Ermic Helvasi. Let's take a look at that. A near eastern cake topped with pine nuts. Its supple sweetness makes it go well with chai, and it gives us a hit point of 10% and a magic point of 3%. So we'll have to use that for a very important battle next time we're up against one, I guess. All right, so in this same little portion of the map, I think, is where our friend was, the Blue Mage. And he's the one who wanted that Vulcrum Sun Sand, right? So let's just go give it to him. I think he was right over here. Waud, I think his name was? Yeah. Here he is. Yeah, I kept going to um, the Vulcrum Dunes there where the boat is, but I wasn't getting any windy or sunny days. So I just had, had to buy one. I wanted to progress the story, so I... Where is it? Oh, there it is. Sun Sound. Well, 
Maybe that was the wrong item. Let's see. Ah, you have returned. I hope you have forgotten our previous exchange. My words were hasty and ill-considered. Ah. Uh, your words have moved me to action. Okay, I've... They've been forgotten. Oops, I guess that was the wrong thing to say. The treasure I would have you seek is a pinch of golden sand. Yes, I got that. There we go. Yes, this is the wondrous pinch of Vulcrum Sun Sand the travelers spoke of. Uh, to be perfectly honest, I was... It was the mother of a colleague who wished to gaze upon this treasure. I am afraid I have another favor to ask you. Would you consent to deliver this to my colleague? I cannot leave the city, you see. A thousand thousand apologies. My colleague is currently part of an Imperial patrol that apprehends desecrators of the ruins found in the... Adiwa Subterrain. The Adiwa Subterrain runs beneath Baflau thickets. May the winds of fortune guide you. All right, so that sets us on the path of an, uh, to continue that mission. So we'll do that. We have to return to the Baflau thickets anyways. Go so ahead we'll there pretty soon. But let's head back to the um, head back to see Naja Salahim at the Salahim Sentinels. All right, so we're back at Salahim Sentinels. Now I'll just put this here and that over there. This will make Salahim Sentinels the most attractive mercenary company in all of Atragan. Now, let's see here. Thanks to President Naja, I learned the true meaning of bravery. dum de dum Oh, and this one. Thanks to President Naja, I experienced my first taste of victory. dum de dum What else do you have? Thanks to President Naja, I learned the true meaning of fear. We'll just change that to fortune. Dum de dum hee. <laughs> that about does it for the Sentinel's voice. I do so love making these company pamphlets. Now, if only these slack jawed mercenaries could finish some decent missions, I could start raking in some respectable profit. Hmm. Makes me wonder why this request came our way. Well now, isn't this a coincidence? I was just about to send someone out to drag in your scruffy hide. As you might know, our company is well respected throughout the Empire. The proof lies in this here gold-trimmed envelope. That's why we need to have a little chat. There's a mercenary commission inside, but first... Let's talk rewards. Unlike the pittance you've been receiving so far, this one will be extravagant, without a doubt. Do you want to know why? I'll tell you why. This envelope was sent by the Atragon Archaeological Research Institute. This request likely originated from the Empress herself. Don't tell me you've never heard of the AARI. They've been conducting investigations within the ruins of Al-Zadal. I'm a bit shaky on the details, but aside from the Aldum remnants in the Idiwa subterrain, there's another sprawling set of ruins not that far from here. That site is called the Ruins of Alzadal. If you travel to the northwest of Baflau thickets until you can see the waters of the Cyan Deep, you'll find the tunnel entrance. Until recently, the Empire had forbidden entry to the ruins. 
a rule enforced by the immortal stationed at the entrance. But now, with investigations completed in that section, the undersea ruins have been opened to the public. That means that even nobodies like you can feast your peepers on the remains of an ancient civilization for the small fee of one imperial silver piece. Supposedly, this fee goes directly towards funding for the AARI, but who knows where all that loot is really going. What do you think of when someone mentions the alchemists of the Imperial Palace? For myself, I always imagine a guy wearing an apron covered in chemical stains, performing the same experiments day after day after day. A tireless researcher type. The AARI is supposed to be full of people like that. But listen to me ramble on. Basically, all you have to know is that they're under the direct authority of the Empress. You see what I'm saying? We have the chance to make a small fortune and get on the good side of the Imperial government. Try not to mess it up. Oh, I suppose I better tell you about the request itself. They want me to send a mercenary to patrol the Alzadal undersea ruins. I hear that some unfriendly local creatures have been holding up the rest of the investigation. You've been showing some decent results lately, so I've chosen you for the job. This should be a good opportunity for fame and fortune. And this kind of work should be a walk in the park for a strapping mercenary like yourself. Failure is not an option. Alzadal, undersea ruins. Are you hard of hearing? Hop to it, soldier! Hmm. Why would someone ask for Oko by name? We're at the northern port, and this is where the entrance to... Uh, this... Uh, yeah, the Bafla Thicket, sorry. So, and this is also the direction we want to head to get to the... that, uh, ruins. And that Alzadal one. I've already put on the records of eminence for this, but we've already, uh... completed it. But we need to do a little bit of fighting around here. Uh, we need to fight more of those pink Marlboros because uh, they drop of that vial of acid, I think it was. And yeah, we got one of those before, but I accidentally sold it. Uh, well, I didn't accidentally sell it, so I sold it on purpose, but because I didn't really think we were going to need it. Turns out we do need one. Um... Northwest. Yeah, we're going the right way. Yeah, this way. So, I'll put, put together a little party here, and yeah, if we uh, see any of those pink Mulbros, we'll fight them. Oh yeah, was, the, the item was called Jody's Acid. That's what it was. So we need to fight the, Amer the Ameritats. That's what they were called, the pink Mulbros. So, shouldn't be hard to find them. Oh, I, I put it in my Mog House. Here I've been wasting time trying to find... It. Oh my god. Okay, we have it. It's safe. I was like fighting so many of these guys and I was like, why are they not dropping it? So, <laughs> that's why I started to suspect I already had the item. That's taken care of. Now what we need to do is... Ah, we need to head down into the Alzadal Undersea Ruins. So the entrance to that is at F6. So let's look at the map. Here, actually, I think first I'm just going to... I wish I could get a macro working for the mount. Honestly, I'm so tired of doing that. Okay, now let's find out where F6 is. How close are we? So, 6 is way up there. Wow. Okay, that's fine. So let's go north. 
actually gonna go northwest. I'll go that way. <clears throat> yeah, that's the first time I've ever utilized the menu to go into my Mog house while I wasn't in, I mean my Mog save, to get into the Mog save without actually being in my Mog house. I knew I could do that, but you can't take items out, but you can at least look at your inventory that way, so yeah, that was really useful. There's another harvesting spot, but we're done with that. Not gonna do any more harvesting. So, we are not going the right way. We need to go northeast now. We're going up here? Yeah. Really? I don't know. No, this is right. We're going the right way. I think it's up here. Yeah, here we go. Now, who do we have here, huh? Here, let's... Let's dismount. Alright, let's talk to this guy here. Kami Mapo Kalam. This tunnel leads to the Alzadal Undersea Ruins. Now that the investigation of the Atragan Archaeological Research Institute has drawn to a close, the ruins have been opened to the public. However, we cannot guarantee your safety. You would be wise to stay aware of your surroundings. The fee for entering the ruins comes to one imperial silver piece. If you need a map of the ruins, you can purchase one for three imperial mithril pieces. Okay, well, we don't need the map, but we do... Yep. Okay. Uh, so I guess I just trade it with them? Is that one of those... There's an invisible wall. Imperial... Where's the money? Oh, here we go. Imperial... Silver piece. Very well. You may proceed. Yeah, a lot of things revolve around money in this part of the world, huh? That's kind of an interesting uh, thing to incorporate into the game. So here we are for the first time in All Zadal Undersea Ruins. Whoa, I'm already impressed. Wow, what a palace. Let's take a What? Okay, good. Oh, it scared me for a second. <laughs> I didn't think there was a map, or it's just the first floor. Let's bring our party back together. I don't know what to expect here. So, let me just look at my notes. I'm just going to investigate and explore this amazing looking palace. It's, it really looks exuberant. Wow, look at this place. Ooh, what's that? Tell me everything. Hey, now. This is an ancient ruin you have the privilege to be in. Try not to disturb the... This is my first time in an ancient ruin. It's so exciting! Poor old Tatia is stuck in the factory all by herself. But Lucky Me gets to go on a field trip with Mr. Gatsad. Well, I'm glad to see you're taking an interest in the past. But if you keep up that ruckus, who knows what sort of unwanted attention you'll attract. Even with us here to protect you, some monster might snatch you away into the shadows. They've even employed mercenaries from Salahim Sentinels to patrol the ruins for dangerous beasts. Many alchemists have fallen prey to the legions of foul creatures that stalk these halls. 
You know how on moonless nights you can hear the roar of the Cyan Deep echoing through the darkness? That sound is really the wails of those lost alchemists as their spirits roam the ruins in despair. Rishfe. That's quite enough. The poor child is shaking in fear. Is that r really true? Maybe you'll be the first to find out. Y you're lying. You're just being a big meanie weenie. Amnath, what do you see? Quiet. We're not alone. Oh. Are you here all by yourself? If you want to see the ruins, you should come along with us. Ah, yes. Your PSC Wildcat badge marks you plainly. I'm assuming this is your first visit to the ruins. Perhaps it would benefit you to join our little tour. Mr. Gatsad was about to tell us about the Alzadal civilization. These ruins have so many stories. Which part of the ruins do you ask about? Well, let's ask a Let's ask about all of them. Let's start with the windows, I guess. You wish to learn about the windows. Look at those fish swimming around in there. I wonder what would happen if the windows broke. Those fish are actually swimming in the waters of the Cyan Deep. We are currently in the bottom of the ocean, looking out at them. Those windows are under an incredible amount of pressure from the weight of the water. If the windows were to break, I'm afraid we'd be crushed in an instant. What is that sparkling light all over the glass? I've never seen anything like it. That is the glow of plasma oil. Ooh, isn't that the same oil we use in the automatons? That's correct. The windows of these ruins are actually membranes of plasma oil that repel the waters of the sea like giant bubbles. You mean it just bounces off? You could put it that way, yes. But these barriers have been in place for hundreds of years. I highly doubt they'll give way anytime soon. A truly astonishing feat of technology. However, the only reason these membranes hold is due to a constant supply of plasma oil. Someday, this supply must run out, and when it does... Are you trying to scare me too, Mr. Gatsad? I'm not sure I want to stay here much longer. Ah, you've touched upon an interesting area, but it is not the shape of the pillars that is so fascinating. Any person with a basic knowledge of archaeology would recognize the graceful conical base and frail-looking central column. This design was often seen in the temples built during the reign of Emperor Al-Zadal some 900 years ago. The fascinating thing about these pillars lies in the construction itself. There are markings that suggest a degree of rotation and elongation is possible. Why would they make a pillar like that? Hmm, I wonder the same thing. I theorize that the architects of this structure wanted to incorporate a level of flexibility to compensate for the changes in water pressure. That's pretty clever. Should these technological marvels be understood in the near future, I hope to adapt their use to the field of automaton construction. Mr. Gatsad. I'm going to work real hard on my studies so I can help you. And the floor. The floor? 
Yes, it really is quite fascinating. Oh, I wanted to hear about this. The elegant mosaics on the floor are designed with several different varieties of stones. One might say that these designs are symbolic of the prosperity of the al Zadal dynasty. It's a shame we've lost so many of the arts of that age. What about this shining symbol on the floor over here? I'm sure I've seen this design somewhere before. Hmm. dum 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 That is a transport device not unlike the runic portals currently employed by the Empire. The Atragon Archaeological Research Institute has deemed these devices safe for use in the continuing investigations. Hmm, dum de dum de dum So they still work even after 900 years? Yes, a curious fact. The AARI has been diligent in its efforts to remove all traces of dust and grime as they work through the ruins, but have not attempted any maintenance. There simply hasn't been a need. It's as if these ruins have been frozen in time. Not merely in appearance, but in all of its functions. I love mysteries. I bet the ruins were just waiting for us to rediscover them. You could be right, Abda Larabda. I think that's enough for one day. Time to return to the workshop. What? Already? We just got here. We can't have poor Tatia mind the place all by herself. Now can we? I suppose not. But you'll bring me here again, right? I promise. Rishvi... Would you mind escorting young Abda Larabda back to Al Zabi? Aren't you coming with me? Not just yet. I have some things to discuss with this mercenary. Well, okay. See you later. I suppose you're wondering why I asked you to stay. As you can see, I am also an alchemist affiliated with the Atragon Archaeological Research Institute. I often have cause to visit the ruins in this manner. Have you figured out what the AARI's true purpose is here in the ruins? The conservation of cultural heritage? The research of ancient civilization? These are merely facades. The truth of the matter is, our organization is under orders from the Empress to locate the missing astral candescences. Yes, the candescence held in Al Zabi is not the only one in existence. How much do you know about the astral candescence, Oko? Not so much. The astral candescence is a national treasure that is set upon the astral plinth within Al Zabi's Hall of Binding. Known as the astral wind, the infinite energy of the astral plane flows from this treasure, uplifting the Empire's citizens and granting them courage. It is the source of the Empire's prosperity. And yet, the candescence is also the catalyst for unending conflict, as the beastmen hurl themselves against our defenses time and again in an effort to claim it. We receive the blessings of the candescence at the price of peace. The astral candescence was originally brought into the city to halt the spread of the Bastican blight in the Empire. The Emperor of the time hoped to ease the suffering of his people and his nation. But there is more than one candescence. There are few that are aware of this fact. 
Through the research of various ancient texts and relics, we have verified the existence of four other candescences. If we can but find these missing treasures, there may be a chance to end this futile conflict. That is the aim of the AARI. What do you say, Oko? Will you aid us in our search? Hmm. Why wonder why I know your name? It is not so surprising. I was the one who sent the request to Salahim Sentinels asking you to patrol the ruins. It seems the immortals stationed at the staging points have taken a liking to you. Your name was at the top of the list of candidates. Oko, if we can find these missing candescences, Atragan, no, the entire Aradja continent may know the paradise of peace once again. And Gatsad hands us an astral compass. That astral compass will lead you to a candescence. But be warned. This device is not set to respond to faint astral waves. The astral wind that blows from the candescence reaches far across the land even as it weakens its intensity. Picking up these waves would help little in pinpointing a location, and so you will only receive a response when you are close to the source. I'm sure you can see why your position as a mercenary with duties across the continent will prove invaluable. I ask you to carry the astral compass with you at all times. Ah, yes, the device has been constructed to ignore the emanation from the, candes from the candescence in Al-Zabi. You have your mission. The future peace of the Near East is riding in your success. One more thing, Oko. Do not reveal my position as the chief of the AARI. We should not even acknowledge each other on the street. I value my quiet existence in the automaton workshop. Amnath. Tell the Grand Vizier that the bell has been set. Understood. And we obtained the astral compass. Let's take a look at the map here. Gilded doors. So we're gonna go in here. Let's explore a little bit more. So here's that glyph that was apparently a transport. Use the device. Yes. Did it bring everybody? Yes, it did. Good. So now where are we? Okay. So we're in a new level now. Al Zadal Undersea Ruins. Okay, and then there's another one over here. Oh boy. <laughs> I don't see any monsters around here. What's this up ahead? I don't know what that was. Oh, it was a person. I guess they were a pl another player. Following a map online. Let's take a look at where we are. Yep, we're doing good. Keep on going. 
God, this looks confusing, huh? Everything looks the same. This is going to be quite a maze. All right, so here we have here. Gilded doors. Let's go through here. Here's a monster. monsters. Oh, I better turn on records of eminence. So here we are. Owls, uh huh. Kikern Goldsmith. Handful of almonds. This one's a pole terror. Poulterer, I guess. Is that a chicken person? A chicken guy. So where are we on the map here? I want to go east. Ah, I'm I'm lost. Okay, we all, we'll just head into this big room. Wow, this is a huge room. Shahaya, Shah, Shahai. Hmm. Well, here's a couple of these portals, and I think that uh, yeah, these will unlock the portal to take us back to White Gate. Oko has attuned himself to the runic portal and opened a path from the Nizal Isle staging point to the Chamber of Passage. Let's just report back to Naja, and then we'll finally end this video. Yeah, now that we have the um, astral... Whatever the hell it was. <laughs> it was... An astral compass. Yeah. Woohoo.
All right, so here we are, back with Naja. She doesn't look happy. The document on the desk bears the mark of the two-headed serpent. ask her about it. You want to know what this document is all about? You really are stretching my patience. This document was sent by the Atragon Archaeological Research Institute, the same organization that requested your mercenary services. Why do you think they sent this? Everything here is about money, right? <laughs> money? Don't get funny with me, mister. Abkuda, Abkuba. Y yes, ma'am. Read out Private Second Class Oko's mercenary attendance record. Since leaving to carry out the request from the Atragon Archaeological Research Institute, Private Second Class Oko has not returned to report a single detail of his mission to President Naja. <sighs> that is all. Let's hear your explanation, Oko. Hmm. You say you went to the undersea ruins as requested. Are you telling me that you ignored company regulations and made a report to the palace before returning to your beloved president? So, knowing the consequences, you acted independently and above your lowly station of mercenary pawn. What's the world coming to? If the palace finds out I can't even control my own employees... I have your reward from the AARI. Let's see how much it's left out of your 255 imperial gold pieces when I deduct your fines. You better hope the reward covers your infractions. Grand Vizier Razfad, we have awaited your arrival. I have a message from Gatsad. The bell has been set on the mercenary. The adventurer from the Middle Lands? Yes, sir. Good news. Our efforts regarding the candescences are proceeding according to plan. All the pieces are falling into place. Excellent. We have faith that you will not fail us. Your magnificence is too kind. However, we grow tired of waiting. My most humble apologies, your magnificence. I beseech your patience a little while longer. Our actions must not draw the attention of our citizens, or our neighbors. We are aware of this. It is our wish to see the treasure in the hands of the Empress. Our wishes are the wishes of the Empire. Do not lose sight of that. Age of Judgment is at hand. Deal with any who threaten our progress. Sir, we cannot give free reign to these otherworldly fiends. Otherworldly fiends? Is he talking about ghosts? What else could it be? Wonderful. Here's our dreary days in the palace will soon be at an end. Uh-huh. Can't you show a little more enthusiasm? Huh? Oh, yes. Wonderful. Our main objective is to make them think that candescences are our primary concern. 
Ghosts are certainly more interesting than this endless speculation about the candescences. Athma. Grand Vizier, we wish to know more about these spirits returning to plague the living. The ghosts? I would not wish to trouble her magnificence with mere rumors. Be that as it may, you will tell us more. Hmm, the Empress knows more than she pretends. Your Magnificence. In recent years, the rumors concerning the appearance of spirits and a ghost ship menacing the waters of the Cyan Deep have become more and more frequent. The Immortals believe many of these rumors to stem from the activities of the Lamia. Don't skip ahead. Back to the ghost ship. Aye, yes, the ghost ship. It bears the name of the famous shipwreck known as the Ashu Talif. Continue. Yes, Your Magnificence. While I must stress that these stories are merely the rumors of the townspeople, there has been a strange twist to the tale. It is said that the true name of the ghost ship is really the Black Coffin, a pirate ship of the Lost Kingdom of Ephraimad. A pirate ship? We believe these inflammatory rumors to be the work of the seagull Fratri, the descendants of the Kingdom of Ephraimad. These rebels have lost their ships and are barely avoiding our grasp. They conjure these heroes from the past to bolster their spirits. It is just... go on. There are citizens of Ephraimad, decent, who are poised to join with the rebels. They say Lazaf... Luzaf... They say Luzaf has returned. Preposterous. Luzaf perished with his kingdom over 200 years ago. We would know the truth behind this ghost ship. Oh, ho Your Magnificence, we cannot mobilize Imperial troops on the basis of mere rumor. If you are unwilling to shoulder this task, Puppet Master, you will solve the mystery of this ghost ship. What? I... I... We accept this task. How can we re refuse a direct request from the Empress? But, Your Magnificence, I do not think that these... This is no longer your concern. We shall recruit assistance from Salahim Sentinels. Afmao of Zhang, we await word of your success. Yes, your magnificence. Come along, Afmao. Interesting, it's like the puppet has more control over the puppet master. It's like reversed roles. I've never seen that before. What? Wait! Grand Vizier? It is the will of the Empress. But do not let them out of your sight. Putting off a direct order. 11 Imperial Gold Pieces. For ignoring company regulations, seven imperial gold pieces. For forgetting the company motto, three imperial gold pieces. For concealing your actions, six imperial gold pieces. For disrespecting your president, nine imperial gold pieces. For making me repeat myself, 15 imperial gold pieces. Which comes to a total of 255 imperial gold pieces. <laughs> You're lucky you didn't go into the red. But there's definitely something fishy going on here. It's mighty strange to have the reward arrive before you did. Might be worth looking into this. I don't like being manipulated, even if it is by the Empress herself. Time to remind the Empire that the Wildcat has claws. Alright, so that is finally the end of this episode. In the next episode, we're going to be investigating more of that puppet and that puppet master behind it all. So, thank you everybody for watching my video today. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel by clicking below. I'm Oko, and I'll see you guys all on the next episode of our playthrough of Final Fantasy XI. 
Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good one. Bye for now.